everybody. I'm Cassidy, one of your Indianapolis Colts cheerleaders, and you're watching the Believe in Colts podcast. What's going on, everybody? This is Believe in Colts, brought to you by Bet Online. With me, as usual, is my guy Gerard Powers. Gerard, how have you been this past week, man? Been good. Been good. Trying to get things situated at home with the kids and school and all that, but been good. How about yourself? Yeah, pretty good. Uh, went to training camp on Sunday. Got burnt. Got a lot of uh, interesting tidbits. Got to talk to a few people. Uh, had a blast, but paid for it um but it was well worth it for the content and to to learn a lot of stuff uh yeah the school starting now for everybody everything's uh trying to get back into a new th that routine right it's, right it's 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 something that that takes a little bit of getting used to after a few months of you know kind of hecticness right <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, today we're going to be giving away uh, a couple shirts uh that were signed by a bunch of uh, colts uh, players and coaches and of course Matt Taylor as well but before we get into that I just want everyone to remember that bet online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports contests events with the first to market odds and lines find reviews and news for every league including major league baseball NFL NBA NHL combat sports esports even golf BetOnline continues to be the top online resource for all your sports information from live in-game betting, props, and futures. Head to BetOnline today or use your mobile device to join and make your first sports bet. Use our promo code BELIEVE50, that's B-L-E-A-V-5-0, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. BetOnline, where the game starts. Now, the Colts released their... Uh, First depth chart heading into the game uh, against the Buffalo Bills this Saturday at 4 Eastern. Um, we were talking about a little bit. You, you said there really wasn't a whole lot of surprises to you about, about this about this depth chart. Yeah. Uh, normally when, you know, teams release that opening, that first depth chart of training camp, it's a lot of things that can change from now until the start of the season. Uh, so I, it wasn't nothing that was going to be any like shocking surprise or any any question marks pop up or anything anything like that for me. So um, you know, just seeing that they released it is is normally just to get you know names out there, get groups out there, so people can start reporting and doing their journalism and all that type of stuff. But the one thing I did see um, that I thought was kind of cool is they considered the nickel position a starting position. Uh, you know, and lift and uh, listed Kenny Moore uh, there as a starter, and then Brandon as the other right corner. Normally, you would just see teams, you know, not even list the nickel position because uh, not too many people consider that as a starting position. But uh, I definitely think uh, there's a high value in that. So seeing them list that as a starting uh, position on defense, I thought that was kind of cool to see. Yeah, absolutely. You go over to like a lot of your websites that you look for this kind of stuff, your depth charts, your rosters, things of that nature, uh, whether it's ESPN or CBS or whatnot, that you're you're looking on their 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 position groups. They they just have cor left cornerback, right cornerback, and then you know the depth of it. They don't actually list uh an NCB, which uh to me that kind of shows that the Colts are acknowledging, in a way, the importance of Kenny Moore. Would you say that? Oh, no question. Um, funny story when I was in um, when I was in Arizona, uh, my second year there, I was just strictly nickel and uh, was the third was the corner unless one of the starters got hurt. But I started at nickel. And every time we had a home game, you know, I went out with the starter as far as uh, the group that get their name called out and all those type things. So it was just cool to see like the Cardinals, Bruce Arians, uh, Ty Bowles value the nickel position as a starting position. And it seems like you got the same thing going going here, because like you said, you know, you'll look on ESPN, you'll look on different rosters and, you know, they don't go in depth about that nickel position, which the nickel spot, you know, is going to play. 50 to 60 snaps a game. So you're, you're almost up there with uh, the starter rep. So you might as well consider it uh, a starting position. Uh, but that's cool. I, I'm, I'm, I'm liking that they're trying to keep Kenny more happy by valuing the nickel position, uh, which we all know there was some little contract uh, talks 
uh, before the season. So hopefully going forward, uh, you know, you know, he might he might get something done since they value in the position. Uh, a few few little things that popped up. You talk about Brandon Faison being the number two. Obviously, Stephon Gilmore is the number one corner on this team, uh, outside corner, anyhow. Uh, but Brandon Faison over Isaiah Rogers caught a lot of people off guard. Uh, they, they had a lot of high hopes for Isaiah Rogers. Uh, but Brandon's been around. He's a stable corner, knows the system. It's not really a surprise to me in that situation, right? No, no, not a surprise at all. That's not to say Isaiah is not having a great camp and not doing his thing. Uh, but sometimes when you're, I guess, leading a defense or in charge of a defense like Gus, you want guys in certain uh, positions. So maybe Isaiah fits better right behind Stefan if something was to happen to Stefan. And the same thing with Brendan on the other side, maybe the fit. It just fits. I think Brendan's what six two, uh, six one, six two, long, big corner. So mm-hmm. you know you're, you you're used to that size. Well, Gus is used to those size corners, and you know with Steph, uh, Stephon, you know being six foot, six one, you know it gives him that length that he wants on the outside. But that's not to say Isaiah is not gonna, you know, have some type of role or or in some type of package to where he's getting those reps as well. Yeah, uh, another big thing that kind of shocked a lot of people was, you know, the Darius Leonard being moved to Mike, uh, where Bobby Okereke, I'm I'm sorry, Darius Shaquille Leonard, all right, uh, Shaq, um, <laughs> I'm still going to take a little bit of time getting used to that, I apologize, uh, being moved to Mike, and then Bobby Okereke moving to Will, you said that really wasn't very surprising to you either, could you uh, kind of... Uh, go in a little bit more on that the reason why it wasn't surprising to me is i mean you want your leader as the voice of the defense and uh Mm -hmm. you know making him that that mike linebacker putting him in the middle of everything he's already got great natural instincts uh if you look back at gus when he was with seattle and um you had uh my guy i just went blank dead middle linebacker he's with the rams now uh Um, wagner you have yeah bobby you had Bobby there that was a great instinctive, intuitive type player as well and the leader of that defense. You you want to make sure he's in the middle of everything. You don't want to kind of put him on one side or the other to where people can kind of run away from him or kind of dictate their game, game plan to stay away from, you know, your best player that you got on defense. You put him in the middle, you're going to have to deal with him in every sense of every situation. Uh, so I think it's a good move. I think it's going to allow him to use his natural abilities to make the plays that he's already making anyway. Absolutely. I mean, sitting in the middle linebacker position, you're be- in a better position to move to the left or to the right, depending upon how the offense moves, which means he's going to be at the ball more often, right? Which, yeah. you know, as you said, uh, you know, will highlight his abilities, more opportunities for those famous peanut punches that he's he's uh, been – Uh, so well known for thank you for watching gerard powers and i here on believe in colts part of the believe podcast network don't forget to smash that like button hit subscribe if you're not subscribed and tag that notification bell so that you're notified next time we upload a video or go live and don't forget you can hit that little red share button help us out a lot with exposure and getting our stuff out to more fans now Let's get back to the video. Uh, I think that'll probably do it. Uh, I mean, there, there's a few things on the offense. Not a lot of big surprises over there. Um, maybe the fact that um, Jelani Woods is fourth on the list, but he, he he's only had a year and a half playing the position in the first place. He's a quarterback in college uh, for the longest part, so he's really raw still. I know that uh, Ogletree has been showing up in camp, but at the same time, uh, Kylan Granson's got a year under his belt, got some experience in this past week. He's done well in camp as well. Um, so I, I don't, this is a situation I think that that's very fluid, right? This could, as you said earlier, could change from week to week in the preseason. Yeah. And, and it's going to change. I mean, you see some of these young guys, uh, that might be number two, number three on the depth chart, you know, they just haven't earned it yet. They haven't, um, you know, I guess, went through the entire process to earn that spot. But that's not to say that they're not earning it Earning it as as we're in real time, like having good camps. Like you said, we've, we've been hearing about the rookie tight end balling, you know, in camp, you know, with the ones, with the two, no matter where he's at, he's out there balling. 
And, uh, you know, I expect to see him move up as Tom comes along too. So some people, you know, it's just the start. First preseason game, you know, you've only been in, a, been in camp, you know, for two weeks now. This is second week of camp. Uh, so a lot of things is going to be kind of what you expect for that first game. And I bet after this first game, you'll see some names get moved around on that on the list as far as who's what, what number uh, when it comes to the depth chart. So moving on to the first preseason game of the year, I have sitting here, I was thinking, man, I got a great question for you. At least I think it is. And when it comes to preseason games and you've got these fringe players that are right on the bubble, right? Mm -hmm. Trying to make that, that roster spot on the 53. Is there ever a situation that you have noticed where these, these, these uh, fringe players, these, these bubble guys, where they might try too hard during a preseason game to make a big play because they have to stand out, right? But it backfires on them and they they get noticed, but in the wrong way, and 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 that what happened, or or is everybody just professional and they don't do that? Uh, everybody, I won't say everybody's professional in the sense of everybody acts the same or handles their opportunity the same. I mean, you got some guys that they know that they got to pop out on film. They know that they got to make the wild plays and do all those things. So you're going to see them taking chances and uh, just trying to, you know, make whatever opportunity that comes to them the most of it. Uh, but at that same token, those guys that's on the fringe know that there's 31 other teams out there that's going to see this tape, you know, as well. So you're just not really trying out for the Colts. You know, you're trying out for other teams as well because that happens a lot in the league to where, a guy might have a great preseason with the Colts, get cut because of a number situation and be on the 53-man roster on another team right after, you know, camp breaks or preseason breaks or whatever the case may be. So even though you're with the team that you're with right now, if you're a fringe guy, you're really just trying to make sure you can put some good tape out there because you can make another team roster for opening day by having a good camp with the team that you're on now. Well, speaking of getting good tape out there, this this Saturday at four, the Colts have a rematch against uh, the Buffalo Bills, who the Colts absolutely rolled during the regular season last year. I mean, rolled them. It was it was the one of the biggest surprising games I have watched all season. Um, now, a lot of that had to do with the five touchdowns that Jonathan Taylor had, right. but going into this game. Who are some players, I'm curious, or positions that is going to be piquing your interest uh, walking into this game that you want to see have a good game walking in? Uh, you want to see the – I think I'm going to be looking at the wide receiver room a, a little bit. I mean, obviously the main starters, your your main guys, Jonathan Taylor, Matt Ron, like a lot of guys probably not going to play much or play at all. Uh, but the guys that need the reps, which I think right now in the wide receiver room, everybody in the room needs the reps to kind of show and improve and uh, really solidify that room. I I'm excited to see Alec Pearson, man. I'm excited to see just what he looks like on an NFL film, get some NFL DBs. Uh, I want to see his size. I want to see his speed. I want to see him stretch the field. Uh, everything that we've been hearing, everything that we've been seeing as far as the highlights and the clips, uh, from training camp. Uh, I'm just hoping that it translates and you can kind of see that on the field. So this first game, I'm not necessarily worried about anybody on the defensive standpoint because, you know, it's going to be a very basic game. It's not going to be, uh, you know, even though we're getting football back, you know how it is with the preseason games. You kind of get built up uh, until we get the real football back. So I'm not expecting to see anything that's you know, crazy from the defense or offense. You just want to see guys that look the part out there, guys that's just making plays, guys that look like they want to be out there. And uh, when, it, when it comes to the young guys, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about the wide receiver room trying to set the tone on what, to, what they're going to look like going forward this season. Now, you was talking about the wide receiver room, and one of the starters listed, obviously, is Paris Campbell. He's, he's listed as that uh, slot receiver right there. But he's had an issue with injuries over his career. Is is this where you kind of limit his snaps, or can you not worry about something like that? Go out there and play the dude. I, I don't think you can worry about it right now. I mean, it would be different if it was, um, let's say, if if he was a guy that you know is a proven player, a guy that you know he's had a couple thousand yard season. He's a Pro Bowl guy that's been dealing with injuries. Yeah. 
we'll monitor him just because we know what he can do. We know what he's capable of. He's proven. But I think with Paris, he's still got a lot to prove. He's still got some things uh, that he has to show, um, you know, the brass itself, that he has to prove to the head coach, to his position coach, uh, to the GMs, to, to the owners that, you know, he's the person that they drafted him to be. Uh, so I don't think that his snaps are necessarily be limited, but it might be on the limited to the extent of, hey, hey, you're with the first group. You're only going to get X amount of snaps for this first preseason game, not necessarily uh, limited for his injury sake or whatever the case may be, because everybody this first preseason game got a certain number of plays that they're going to play anyway. And I think he'll be in that first group with however many that first group of plays um, that plays that they're going to have. But I don't think it's going to be anything because of his injury history. I think he's full go and uh, they're excited to see what he can prove as well. This channel is proudly sponsored by the Backroom Collection. They do beautiful sports canvas art with football, basketball, baseball, and other sports themes. Special orders are accepted and autograph pieces are available. Many Indianapolis Colts signed pieces will be available beginning in November. Just use your discount code CL10 to purchase the pieces you want to spice up your living area. That's CL10. Yeah, Frank Reich did discuss the fact that you know there is going every everybody's going to play a little bit this preseason, sprinkled in here and there, depending upon the importance of the position, how much experience they have, that kind of situation. Um, we we just talked about Paris Campbell. There's a couple guys on the offensive line that are taking over new positions. Uh, Danny Pinner at the right guard, and then obviously the left tackle, the blind side blocker in Matt Pryor. Do you expect to see uh, those guys stay in a little bit longer past the regular um, uh, starters because of the fact that they're they're starting a new position and that they're young, or do you expect them to leave with the re uh, regular starters when they do? Uh, the regular starters, I'm expecting them to play like a series, however long that first series be. Now, for guys that, like you said, maybe need the extra reps to prove and, you know, kind of get honed in and, on what to expect or whatnot, the, the, the most that they might play would be a quarter or maybe two series. Uh, so even if they go out with the starters, uh, a couple more plays other than that, I can, I still see in them, uh, I still see them not playing past the first quarter at the end of the day. All right. All right. Um, now we we did. Wa I don't know. You probably you you watched the Hall of Fame game, right? Uh, part mean, of it. Part, part of, it. of it. Okay. I I I I got through the first half and I was like, this this game is over. Uh, this, <laughs> this isn't even entertaining anymore. Um, uh, but I I I got where it come from. It it just showed the depth, right? Of of both teams. You know, the the, the Steelers' depth was was much greater in my opinion in that game. Uh, compared to the, or, yeah, the Raiders and the Jaguars. In this, this is a situation again where you're gonna, you know, you're you're looking at how good your depth is, right? This th this first game, um, where you, you're gonna be looking at those backups more often, like um, uh, the backup to uh, Grover Stewart, right? Uh, Johnson, yeah, yeah, got got to see, you know, he's probably gonna get a lot of playing time, the rookie. Uh, guys that um, uh, Kiki Kuti. Now, yeah, that's just another. That's another question. Kiki Kuti is the backup slot receiver. He's a veteran. He's he's been on the he's been in the NFL longer than any of the other wide receivers on this Colts team right now. But he'll probably still play more snaps than the other guys, right? Uh, maybe. I mean, uh, that, that's still one of those situations that, that it is if you're in the, the room or at practice and inside those meeting rooms, everybody is kind of on the same page when it comes to who's going to be playing what and who's going to be doing what. You're right in saying the young players are going to play um, the rookies, second year guys, third year guys, backups. You know, you're going to play the majority of this game. And then if you look at certain positions, certain positions are just young as it is. So, uh, like when I mentioned the wide receiver room, I can see those guys. Certain guys are going to get taken out. Don't get me wrong. You might see Pittman out there for a couple of series. He'll get, you know, took out or whatnot. But the most, most of those guys you're going to see for the majority of the game. Uh, just because they don't have any experience, you know, they don't have any reps. 
And uh, and this is the the opportunity that you can do that. You know, we don't have four preseason games anymore. You only have three. You know, so at one point next game, you know, you're going to try to look as sharp as possible. You know, from a team standpoint, because now you're two, three week, th uh, two or three weeks away from the season. In the third game, you're not trying to get anybody hurt. You don't want anybody to roll an ankle, jam a thumb, hurt a pinky, anything. The third game, so these first two games is very important. First game, you're going like I said, you're gonna see a bunch of the young guys, rookies, um, guys really trying to make the team prove a point that they belong, that they can uh, handle a certain role. And then the second game is going to be probably the game that the, that the starters are going to play a lot and uh, try to get things toned up to get ready for the season. When you talk about no injuries, that's that's so important, right? Even you know, even Colts fans are like, you know, the best thing to come out of this is no injuries. But as a player out there on the field, do you still look at like this game and go, I want to win this? <sighs> No, that's a good question. When it comes to preseason, I'm going to honestly say it doesn't matter. I mean, any – I mean, it sounds bad to say it don't matter. Anytime that you're competing, you want to win as a player. You play to win. Mm -hmm. So any guy that's out there competing, he's trying to win. Don't get me wrong. Um, but from a team standpoint, you just want to see the growth in wherever you're at as far as molding your team. You want to – see certain guys that you're you're looking at that you think is going to have a vital role or a vital responsibility able to handle it in the preseason or whatnot so it's certain little goals uh that you might have as a team and things that you want to see during the preseason but we all know even though we want to win the preseason games don't count uh so you can go undefeated in the preseason and all you want and then lose the first three games of the season and nobody's going to be mentioning how well the team looked during the preseason <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, when you play and you compete, you want to win. Every player that's in the game playing wants to win or they wouldn't be playing, period. But from a coaching standpoint, from an administration standpoint, there's there's certain key things that you're looking at each preseason game because you're looking far as big picture. You're getting ready for week one. Going into a game, the first preseason game, for a lot of these rookies, guys that, that's never played in the NFL before and are trying to make a team, as a former veteran player in the NFL, what is some advice that you would give them? Man, I remember my first preseason game, and I'm not going to lie. It was, um, it was a little nerve-wracking. I mean, you just don't know – what to expect and you know i came from the sec so i i played in the biggest of biggest games played against the best of the best players and um and and did well in college but for whatever reason going into the professional ranks of things you don't know how it's going to be until you experience it i mean you see things on tv and i remember we were playing the vikings uh so of course you hear about all the stories with adrian peterson and all those type things, you see the highlights until you're on the field with them and realizing that you can end up on the bad side of one of these highlights if you don't, you know, believe in yourself that you can play at this level. So it's going to be a little nerve wracking, but at the end of the day, football is a kid's game, man. You've been playing football your entire life. So if you just go back to the basic things that you taught growing, that you was taught growing up, learning the game of football, tackling, running to the ball, carrying the ball, all the simple things. If you do that well, you're going to be fine uh, in your game. It's a lot of times we get in our own head and make it tougher than what it is because it is a professional ranks. But at the end of the day, if you're good at tackling, you're going to be good at tackling on Sundays as well. Awesome. That's that's great advice. Just, just remember your basics. Um, so as we know, we're at that point in time. I think we're coming up to the end of this, unless there's something else you want to discuss when it comes up to the uh, this Saturday's game. Nah, I'm excited to watch it, though. Can't wait to oh, see it. Oh, absolutely. I can't wait to see it either. Um, we got a giveaway to go, uh, go through here with uh, a couple Believe in Colts shirts that will be given away. We got two of them right here. Um, yeah, with a bunch of signatures. I need two numbers from you, Gerard. Uh, between 1 and 12, that's how many people typed in the code phrase, believe in Colts. Uh, give me the first one. I'm going to go eight. Eight. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight. That is Jacob Duncan. Congratulations, Jacob. You just got yourself a team signed Believe uh, in Colts shirt with um, Frank Reich and, and Ryan Kelly and and Woods and Okereke and a bunch of others. Give me another number. I'm going to go two. Number two. That's Tactful Colt. Congratulations, Tactful Colt, for you winning one as well. Next week, we will be giving away at least one, maybe two more shirts. Make sure you keep an eye um, because, hey, you could be a winner as well. All right. But in order to do that, if you're listening to this on an audio podcast, make sure you go check out YouTube slash channel slash Lawrence Owen. Go to find this specific video and type in the code phrase the code phrase for this specific giveaway that we're getting ready to do next week you got to type in gerard powers name that's all you got to do type in gerard powers and you have a shot at winning uh a signed a colts signed shirt from believe thank you um any any exiting words man Nah, man, we're here. First preseason game following. The season will be here before you know it, so it'll be some fun conversations coming up soon. Absolutely, and we got an interview next week that I'm excited to to do, so uh, make sure you keep an eye. Make sure that you download and share, subscribe, everything that you can do in order to keep following us because you're not going to want to miss a minute of the coverage that we are going to be giving you. And until next time, I'm Lawrence Owen. That is Gerard Powers. And as usual, go Colts. Do you believe? 